I've been on the hunt for a cheap used gaming laptop, and my searching led me to a lot of gamer grease, broken laptops, and subpar deals. So, while sifting through old gaming laptop models, I decided to get something new in the meantime. The Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3, an insane budget gaming laptop that, in my opinion, does absolutely everything a gaming laptop can do right, from the design to the performance and even the compromises they had to make with it. I was going to buy this myself, but I did reach out to Lenovo and they provided me with a press unit that I can use for the duration of this video, which for full disclosure, they did not pay me, provide me with any products to keep or have any say in the review. In fact, I actually have very high standards for Lenovo products, so I may be a little bit more critical of something with Lenovo's branding that is also budget. So let's start with why I got this. I don't like gaming laptops. The designs are generally not the best in my opinion. They stand out too much. They're heavy, loud, and not really built with just being used as a laptop in mind usually. And if you want something more usable and built well, like the Dell XPS lineup, you're going to be paying a ton of money for it. And honestly end up with something that isn't even great at gaming due to the thermal limitations. But this laptop really turns the gaming laptop stereotypes on their head. It has a really clean dark gray finish around the entire laptop that actually hides smudges pretty well and just has this really clean understated design. Obviously you can look at it compared to a T-series and know it's a gaming laptop due to just how thick it is, the heat sink bulging out of the back, and also you know the weight and kind of angular design. But if you took this to work with you or to a coffee shop, it's not going to be glaringly obvious that your book didn't sell well, you've given up on all your dreams, and you just want to feel like you're bettering your life on a Saturday morning pretending to work, even though you know you're just playing the same game you've been playing for two decades now, and you're going to be stuck in your 9 to 5 until they fire you weeks before retirement and make you work until the day you die. My point is, it has a super clean design and doesn't scream gamer. It's also insanely reasonably priced at $900. Actually, at the time of recording this and multiple times while I was researching, it was going for $699.99, nice, on Lenovo's store, and right now it's $650 on Amazon at the time of recording. I did also start doing affiliate links for Amazon, so if you're interested, maybe pick one up and I'll get a small kickback to help me buy more products on my own dime. But that price is ThinkPad terrible territory, and actually less than my ThinkPad T14 was brand new. And from the first glance, it's kind of hard to tell how they made this such a nice laptop for the price. So let's take a look at the specs. This has a Ryzen 5 6600H, a 6-core, 6 3.3GHz processor that boosts all the way up to 4.2GHz, more on that later, an RTX 3050 and 8GB of upgradable RAM. And this is the big part, a 15-inch 120Hz 1080p IPS display. But these come with just a 256 gigabyte SSD, which is really on the smaller side, especially if you want to actually store games on your gaming laptop. But at the very least, you can upgrade it somewhat easily. And this is actually the first laptop, actually the first product in general I've used, where I actually had to stick an external SSD on it due to the base storage just being absolutely puny, especially for a gaming device. You could maybe store two or three modern games on here with that tiny SSD. In terms of build, quality? Well, this isn't a ThinkPad. So frankly, my hopes were not high. But the build quality was actually pretty good. Not quite on the level of a ThinkPad or a Dell XPS, but there was basically no keyboard flex when typing. Even typing hard, there was just a little bit, and the keyboard is pretty high quality and even comes with a numpad. The keys have very little travel and aren't the most satisfying to type on, but are pretty quiet and, I mean, honestly, the best word I can use to describe them, honestly, is just not distracting. You also get full-size arrow keys, which I know a lot of people might not appreciate nowadays, but left-handers, and those Command & Conquer players will really appreciate this. Something else people with hands will probably appreciate is most of the ports are actually on the back of the laptop. So you don't have to have keyboard, mouse, ethernet, charging wires running all the way around. And speaking of the portage, we've got USB 3.2 on the right, all on its lonesome, and another USB 3.2 port on the left with a headset jack. Then on the back, we've got a proprietary Lenovo charging port, of course, USB Type-C, Ethernet, and a full-size HDMI 2.0 port, which you can also actually charge off the USB-C port if you're out and don't have this beefy Lenovo charger handy if you're just doing regular tasks, which overall I'd say is a pretty solid port lineup. I don't like the proprietary chargers much, and I would prefer another USB 3.2 port, and we also have full-size Ethernet, which is just beautiful and kind of a necessity if you're going to be gaming, in my opinion. No SD card slot, unfortunately, but my T14 doesn't even have a full-size SD card slot, so I guess I'll just blame Apple and their dongles instead of Lenovo. The chassis itself is actually really rigid, surprisingly so, especially since this weighs 5 pounds, 3 ounces. It has pretty much no chassis flex, and can easily be held by a corner if you're some bodybuilder 
and not only want to risk your laptop, but also your wrists. Also, this is kind of funny. There's a little radio and graphics sticker right next to an RTX sticker right alongside a Ryzen CPU sticker. <laughs> Seems like AMD is really embracing the size doesn't matter thing when it comes to the GPU built in the processor on this laptop. Which, if you are interested in some more budget Ryzen, I'm planning on building a sub $500 Ryzen system soon. So subscribe for that because it is going to be way harder than I thought to put together. So for day to day, unsurprisingly, this laptop just kind of works. It doesn't have the highest resolution, clearest, sharpest, most vibrant screen, or the best, most satisfying keyboard to type on. But the trackpad is really nicely sized. It's wide and doesn't feel too mushy to click and is really, really responsive. It obviously isn't great to game on, as no trackpads are, but it's good for day-to-day -day use. The screen also has a nice matte finish. It's not too distracting and the colors are all right. I mean, I wouldn't want to do any color grading on this monitor, but hey, it works. When doing basic tasks, the laptop can keep itself extremely cool and quiet. Even when I was installing my Steam games for testing, the fans were barely audible. It was also able to stay cool and quiet while watching YouTube videos too. Nice change of pace for my $500 Dell XPS 15 that would kick on the fans just from watching 4K videos. The screen doesn't get quite as bright as I would like, but it does get really dim for those late night gaming sessions. And honestly, you probably don't want to be gaming out in the sun anyways. I don't know, maybe that's just me. So let's take a look at the ease of repair. Ease of repair is extremely important, especially with laptops. And if Lenovo's track record is any indication, this should be simple enough to take apart where even an Apple user couldn't screw it up. Taking it apart is actually pretty simple. There's two screws on the back of the laptop where the fans exhaust next to all your ports, and eight more screws on the bottom of the laptop. After prying off the back cover for the fans, there are four more screws here to take out, and then you can slowly take off the bottom lid. You probably want to be very slow and careful taking this off because the top part that it's attached to is a really thin piece of plastic that seems like it could break very easily if you're too aggressive. After popping off all of those edge clips and then another in the middle, you're in. Here you can see the two speakers, one on the left, one on the right, and two fans for the GPU and CPU, and also the heat sink, which I am not going to take off, but it does seem relatively accessible. The battery is easily removable, which is a giant plus, especially for a gaming laptop, where more than likely you're going to be draining and recharging the battery more often, just due to the overall power draw of the system. And I didn't take it apart, but under this plate is where you can add more memory, something I would highly suggest doing. There's also a small M.2 slot here with our 256GB SSD, and a full-size M.2 slot here where you can add more storage storage, something I wish I did at the beginning of this video, but I wasn't sure yet if I could. The two fans are also easily accessible and removable, and honestly I'd say this is pretty easy to dive into and take apart, and none of the clips broke too. And when it's all put back together you can't even tell it was taken apart, which is even more impressive since I think someone else was actually in here because almost every single screw on the back of mine was barely hand tight, so that means at least one other person took it apart without the clips breaking and also being able to put it back together and have it look all right, so big ups Lenovo. I don't like this design though where you have to take the back fan shroud off, especially since it's so cheap and flimsy and takes so much force to remove, but considering how hard it is to upgrade so many modern laptops, I will absolutely deal with taking this little fan shroud off so that I can upgrade my storage and RAM. The heatsink being so easily accessible is also a huge plus too for when you need to replace your thermal paste. So it's time for the fun part. Synthetic testing. Blender BMW took a little over half a minute using both the CPU and GPU, really solid time. And Cinebench R23 completed with a score of 10,025, which is really solid and comes really close to the 14 core Jank station build. Although the fans on the idea pad were screaming halfway through the test, even though it was just a CPU benchmark. And in case you're curious, my Ryzen 7 and my T14 got this score for comparison. All right, this is where the fun begins, gaming. So since this has a 120 hertz screen, I tried to get my settings to the point where I was getting somewhere in the 120 FPS range, since anything below that is kind of pointless in my opinion, unless it's like Stellaris, Vermworld, or like Stardew or something of that nature. Even then, I kind of like the smoothness. Either way, starting off with Beam and G, Beam was pretty RAM limited and struggled to hit 120 FPS on low settings. And on high settings, it was getting kind of in the 50 to 60 FPS range with some pretty bad stuttering due to the low RAM. Doomer Eternal was able to run at medium settings with balanced DLSS at around 120 to 150 FPS. This really helped 120 Hertz display shine. It shined so much actually, I played this while recording for a about over two hours <laughs> and didn't realize it. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition with medium settings and balanced DLSS managed 50 to 60 FPS in the intro area but had pretty bad stuttering. I think Exodus is just a little demanding for the poor mobile RTX 3050 in the idea pad, especially the ray tracing on. CSGO is another game that really shined with this laptop and monitor. It ran all high settings 1080p and managed 120 to 150 FPS. It didn't make me a much better player, but it was more responsive than a typical 60Hz display, and the laptop was easily able to push 120 FPS 
constantly. Gaming overall on the IdeaPad Gaming 3 is really, really solid. With increasing competition in the CPU and sort of in the GPU space, sub-1000 gaming laptops have seriously come a long way. And more story-based games like Metro can still run decently too without too many issues. Even Doom Eternal, which is pretty modern by my standards, can easily run at a steady 120 FPS to take full advantage of the screen. And I also didn't notice any throttling even after long gaming sessions. The CPU and GPU both managed to stay pretty cool at the cost of fan noise, which is a trade-off I will happily take, especially since I typically wear headphones while I play games anyways. And the CPU actually pretty much the entire time I was playing Doom Eternal was just pegged at 4000 megahertz, which is awesome. Much unlike my Dell XPS, which would drop to 800 megahertz frequently. Even if you're not wearing headphones though, the speakers are pretty decent and have solid bass. I wouldn't call them exceptional or anything, but perfectly usable. Although I would put a frame rate cap on whatever game you're playing if you're using speakers so the fans don't spin up as they have a pretty distracting high-pitched whine when they're nearing full speed. Unfortunately, I don't have a thermal camera, nor the budget on one, Amazon affiliate links, but the Wazda keys managed to stay somewhat cool, but the rest of the laptop, excluding the palm rest, was pretty warm, along with the arrow keys, which got pretty hot. So sorry, left-handed gamers. On the bright side, for us ambidextrous gamers, or just normal people, I don't know, the keyboard was pretty decent to play on. I'll just say it wasn't distracting. I love my big mechanical keyboards for gaming typically, but I wouldn't complain about this one. The keys aren't too mushy, they have a somewhat satisfying click, they're just, they're alright, alright? The screen was really great for gaming though, absolutely loved it. Didn't have much ghosting and was pretty clear. Obviously, image quality wasn't that of a high-end display or an OLED, but you're going to be giving up some things to meet this price point. And I would take this display almost any day over anything else at this price range. I didn't do extensive kind of regular use battery testing since I'm not going to actually daily a laptop that isn't mine, especially since I take my laptop like everywhere I go and just kind of throw it around in my backpack. But for the basic tasks I did off the charger, it was all right, not amazing. And I played Doom Eternal with an uncapped frame rate, same settings as before, it lasted about an hour on battery, but I didn't get too much of a performance drop until I hit that last 15%. Most likely, this was just due to the battery being on the smaller side and having not only a decent 6-core CPU, but a dedicated GPU. But I mean, honestly, I wasn't too disappointed. If I was going to travel with this and want a better battery life, I would probably cap games at 60 FPS and maybe lower the settings a bit so my GPU power use isn't quite as high. In terms of Premiere, this isn't exactly a creator laptop, but Premiere did run absolutely beautifully. Even in a 4K timeline, at full res, scrubbing was extremely responsive. But the 8GB of RAM is going to heavily hinder you, especially if you have more complex timelines with more animations. I would highly suggest upgrading that if you actually plan on using this for both gaming and creating. It was also able to export my entire 5D classic review in about 10 minutes. That's about double the time it took the jank station to export the same video at the same settings. This was a little bit longer than usual, but I really think that this is an excellent jack of all trades laptop that could easily replace your desktop without having to shell out insane amounts of money for a new XPS or ThinkPad X1 Extreme. 